Harmonic generation can add life, sparkle and interest to an accurate but otherwise dry digital recording. There are a number of plugins available that will add warmth to your vocals, instruments, buses and even your entire mix. In this video I'll demonstrate the SSL X Saturator. I've chosen this plugin because it offers control over the amount of even order harmonics you can add. So you have the option of a vacuum tube style sound or transistor or tape recorder style odd order harmonic distortion. That's a little bit of a simplification but you can hear the effect in the video. In this video I'm going to use a simple sine wave so you can hear and see the harmonics clearly. I'll cover vocals and instruments in a separate video. Let's dive in. I'm going to test the SSL X saturator on a 100 Hz sine wave so we can hear and see clearly what it can do. Let's start with just the sine wave with the plugin bypassed. It sounds clean and it looks clean within the limits of accuracy of the spectrograph. I'll switch in the plugin with its default settings. This is a subtle but audible difference. You can see harmonics at 200 Hz and 300 Hz. Individually, they're about 60 decibels down on the 100 Hz signal, but they're definitely audible. I can increase the drive and the harmonics will become very clearly audible. The level will be low at first and increase gradually. Increasing the drive too much results in clipping, which probably isn't what you want. But if you like the sound as a special effect, it's available to use. I'll look at how to increase the drive without clipping later. What I'll do now is go through each of the controls in turn, stepping them from their minimum to their maximum values. I'll skip the input gain, because this is something you'd only need if the signal you were working with was too high in level. I'll go from left to right, starting with depth. Quoting from the manual, Depth sets the amplitude of the added harmonics. At 0%, no harmonics are introduced to the input signal. At 100%, the full amount of generated harmonic content is introduced to the input signal. Let's hear it. The harmonics control varies the amount of even numbered, also known as even order, harmonics, similar to what you would find in a vacuum tube amplifier. As you'll see, the odd numbered or odd order harmonics, as you will find in all amplifiers and in tape recorders, don't change much. I'm simplifying a bit here, but this is enough knowledge for practical purposes. I've increased the depth, drive and shape controls to make the harmonics more easily audible and visible. By the way, the control legend says second and third. It is common to see second order to mean the same as even order, and a little less commonly, third order to mean odd order. I feel that this has the potential to be confusing, as it ignores higher frequency harmonics, and second and third orders could be mistaken for the individual second and third harmonics. It's a smallish point, but it's good to be clear. The calibration of this control is rather unintuitive. 0% gives the highest level of even order harmonics, 100% gives the least. The level of the odd order harmonics does change, but not by as much. To continue my less to more approach, 
I'll start at 100% and reverse down to zero. The mix control sets the blend between the original signal and the process signal. Again, I've set a higher drive, depth and shape so we can hear and see the harmonics clearly. I've also set the harmonics control so we get even order as well as odd order harmonics. Shape, according to SSL, adds harmonics in the high frequency end of the audio spectrum. Minus 50% is subtle and smooth, plus 50% will sound more aggressive. Where SSL says that shape adds harmonics in the high frequency part of the audio spectrum, this isn't quite what we see in the spectrogram in this demonstration. As the control is increased from minus 50%, the second and third harmonics increase in level, and the higher harmonics decrease. Passing through 0%, the higher harmonics increase again in level, and the second and third harmonics stay the same. This is a little more complex than SSL's explanation, but the sound is definitely brighter, so we can say that the shape control is doing its job. SSL refers to the plus 6dB button as boost in the manual, which says, quote, boost adds 6 decibels of headroom to avoid internal clipping. Or in their promotional material, a headroom button provides an additional 6 dB of headroom for creating heavily boosted slash distorted signals without digital clipping. This really isn't entirely clear, so some experiment is needed. I'll start by finding out the point where too much drive causes clipping, according to the plugin's output meter. We're interested in the left column, which shows the peak level. The right column shows the RMS level, but we don't need that here. The meter turns red when internal clipping occurs. Watch again. So it seems that the boost button doesn't make any difference, but what if I reduce the output gain to minus 6 decibels and try the test again?
I get a noticeable increase in distortion at a drive setting of plus 7 decibels, even though the meter doesn't show clipping. Let's hit the boost button. So I do seem to get more headroom. At a drive of plus 13 decibels, there's suddenly clearly audible distortion, but the output meter shows no clipping, so everything's under control. The question is now whether this gives any useful variation in sound texture. I'll compare settings of output gain minus 6, drive plus 7, boost on, with output gain 0, drive plus 1, boost off which you would imagine would be the same, if indeed the boost button only increases the headroom without changing the levels. It is different, and the output level is different too. So, part of the process of learning this plugin would be to experiment with similar combinations of settings. So far, I've demonstrated what could reasonably be considered to be warmth or harmonic enhancement, sometimes quite a lot of it. But this plugin is also capable of serious distortion. To get this, it helps to lower the output gain. In this case, I've lowered it to minus 6 decibels. I've set the harmonics control to second because this gives us even order harmonics as well as odd. I've set the depth to 75% to retain a useful amount of the fundamental and the shape to plus 50%, just because I prefer the sound for this demonstration. I'll increase the drive from zero all the way to the top. I've engaged the boost button to provide extra headroom as a precaution. I'll leave out the caption this time because I'd like you to concentrate on the spectrograph and compare what you see with what you hear. That was an interesting journey through the harmonic series. I'm going to close with a run-through of the presets. Most users would probably start by choosing a preset that sounds good on their vocal, instrument, bus or mix, then tweak it to exactly what they want. Again, it's useful to experience this with a simple sine wave.
One more thing. You might wonder why I've changed the settings in a stepwise fashion rather than continuously. I did this in the video edit. This is what a continuous change in the drive setting sounds like. It's too clicky for a demonstration, but it shouldn't cause any problems in normal use. The other controls are much smoother, but the spectrograph had trouble keeping up. So I recorded in longer segments, then trimmed them down in the video edit. You can learn more about harmonic generation and all kinds of processes and effects in the Audio Masterclass Music Production and Sound Engineering course. I put a link in the description. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.